Competitive paintball is growing at a shocking rate. Currently ranked as the top extreme sport in America, the sport is gaining momentum in over 40 countries across the globe with an exclusive blend of speed, strategy, physical exertion, and really cool gear. Gear you need, most importantly, you're gonna need a paintball marker, uh, tank, hopper, and it controls the balls going in there. The tank will control all the gas going to the gun so it will fire. My sword, purpose, shooting people. We set these things to go 300 feet per second, which is like 205 miles an hour. Usually you're looking at about 15 to, 15 to 18 balls a second. We have our, uh, our gats, barrel condor to make sure I don't shoot anybody in the eyes out here, because uh, kind of a loose cannon. Tank cover, this protects your bottle from when you hit it on the ground and stuff like that. It doesn't really hurt, I mean, it stings for a second and then you're over it, you know, nothing, nothing too bad. Like a hit by a baseball. Basically I have like our little thin jersey that really doesn't stop any paintballs from being hurting you or anything, but we have like arm pads, protective gear pads. Because honestly right now at this event, it's the concrete and then there's like a bit of turf over the top of it, so it's pretty tough. Gloves so you don't burn your, don't burn your hand. Our pants obviously. Um, knee pads under here for the same reason we have the elbow pads. Shoes that'll have some traction, some sort of cleat. Good, nice golf cleats. I think we're playing 18 holes later on if you guys want to come. Our packs hold all our paintballs. Helps me shoot people even more. These are filled with paint, of course. I got like seven on my back, times 140. As far as headgear, everybody wears something different. Very important for looks and for protection, and maybe bouncy, bouncy, bouncy. I just go for this little sweatband. If you want to keep your eyes, you got to wear this, my mask. We just got our new special made straps for our team. Uh, besides that, you just need to have fun and uh, go shoot people. That's about it. That's kind of how it works. We've assembled some of the sports superstars to reveal why paintball has become so hot and get a taste of the attitude that feeds the sport today. You're shooting them. That's, that's pretty intense. It's not like any other sport. Canadian paintball is in its infancy, but there's a young, aggressive team out of Edmonton, Alberta that's making a big splat on the NPPL circuit this season. Led by team standout Josh Davey, Impact Josh, has become known as Canada's team and they're looking to take the sport to a whole new level nationwide. It's great that we're an all-Canadian team for those Canadian kids back home. Because we're Canadians, very tough to come down to the American side and get noticed as a good player. So this is an opportunity for those guys to eventually play on another professional team. And we've noticed a big jump in Canadian paintball. You know, our fans are dedicated. They're always online. They're always watching TV. You know, they're always cheering for us. So it's kind of nice. We've got a whole country behind us. Impact's hometown city of Edmonton is definitely behind them, as shown in a recent recognition for achievement on behalf of the mayor. The success in the National Professional Paintball League and a recognition of your role in enhancing the international profile in the city of Edmonton as a, as a center sports section. This is actually quite a neat sport. I've, never, I've always watched it, never played it. Like, does it look as neat as it is? Oh, oh, the, the mayor was incredible, I, you know, to get recognized as a sport and as a, as a team from the, from the mayor, from the city. It was incredible. Justin? Josh? Yeah, Josh. Uh, which Josh? Josh. Oh, Davey. Oh, Davey. Oh, yeah, that's me. Warren? Yeah, we have a professional paintball team, and it's based out of Edmonton. You know, you guys should be proud, and they recognize us for that. A little, little something for yourself there. That's neat. A lot of these kids don't really realize what they got yesterday. You know, and I kind of look back and look at the back and go, you know, <laughs> down the road, you know, look back at that and go, you got recognized from the mayor, from the entire city, recognize you as a professional sport. So I'm proud to have Edmonton on the jerseys and to have Edmonton backing us up. I don't think the city knows us as well as they might you know, want to or as we want to, but it still makes me happy that the, the mayor recognized us and the city recognized us. So it was pretty neat to see. Gucci, Gucci glasses. I want to be the mayor. See those things? Baller. Coming up. Josh Davey and Edmonton Impact take on Chicago Farside in the first NPPL matchup of the day when Extreme Paintball Beyond the Paint continues on FSN. Hi, I'm Alex Reggie of Team Dynasty. When running Dynasty Paintball Clinics, we see all types of paintball players. Whether you're just getting into paintball or ready to step up to the next level, the JT Ready to Play Kit has everything you need. Get this $200 kit and a JT gear bag offer for only $99. To 
To find a store near you, go to JTUSA.com. Are you ready to play? FSN's coverage of Extreme Paintball Beyond the Paint is brought to you by Empire. It's what we do. By WGP Paintball. Accuracy counts. And by Mad Croc Energy Gum, Fruit Chews, and Drinks. It's what you need. The NPPL Pro Division attracts the world's elite. The format is simple, but the action is intense. Two seven-man teams play a round-robin style tournament. Their strategy will be to maneuver through a series of strategically placed bunkers, such as the cans used by the back shooters, the mirroring car washes, the critically used Doritos, and the snake found in the red zone. Each team will try to eliminate as many of the opposing team's players as possible while working across the field to capture the flag. On our last installment, Paintball gear designer Travis Lemansky and LA Infamous came out strong against Pasadena Bad Company, commanding the key positions in the red zone first. But a one-for-one -one penalty on Infamous gave Bad Company the lead on bodies. This momentum shift would give Bad Company the boost needed to take control and capture the victory. Infamous would go on to seek revenge on Portland Naughty Dogs. Naughty Dogs lost one of their key players on the breakout, giving Infamous the advantage on position. Infamous controlled the rest of the game from the snake, leading them to an impressive win. Our first NPPL Pro matchup of today features Chicago Farside against Canada's leading pro team, Edmonton Impact. Impact star Josh Davey had been hooked on the game ever since he first laid his hands on a paintball marker. I think I was about 12. I went out with my father and a friend of his with their two sons. I just went out to a local field back home uh, in Grand Prairie. As soon as I picked up that paintball marker, I was hooked. Those first few paintballs flew past my head, even though I was hiding, putting my gun above my head, scared. It was like nothing I've ever done before. It was unbelievable. And the funny thing that day uh, was my father, he was out playing, and he ran down a hill, uh, stubbed his toe on a stump, and uh, shattered uh, his big toe all the way up his foot and, uh, and broke it. So I get back from playing a game, and. He's kind of leg up. Oh, I'm hurt, I'm hurt, I'm hurt. And he's like, well, can you drive me to the hospital? And I'm like, the hospital? I'm 12. He's like, well, I'll just jump in the seat and I'll help you out. You'll be fine. You know, a kid at 12 years old driving would be awesome. I asked him for 20 bucks and I told him to drive himself. So the first tournament paintball I played was uh, with actually my father's friend and, and his few sons. We had a kid's team. And he asked me to go play uh, Canadian Nationals when I was 14. So. That was the, uh, the first major tournament, and that got me just, since then, I haven't, I haven't stopped playing. I played every year, never took a break, just been hooked ever since. So, yeah, just over 10, 11 years now I've been playing tournament paintball, so it's been uh, unbelievable. Now on the NPPL center stage, Davey and his Canadian Impact team take on Chicago Farside. Let's go to veteran pro Rich Telford for the call. All right, we're getting ready to play with uh, Impact coming from Edmonton on our left and Chicago far side coming from our right. Look at something exciting. Similar breakouts, both teams spread seven players across the back line, shooting those guns, trying to catch the other team overextending early. Far side players over on the right hand side of that car wash trying to stop uh, impact from moving up. I've uh, referred to far side a couple times as evil because that's what they used to be called. They changed their name at their last event to avoid a penalty, which was a bit crafty from them. Ed Edmonton's here in the snake. Standing up, which is a little unusual. Farside's got two players walking out. One of their players fills the snake. Might be a little late, though. It looks like Edmonton's already got a lot of this field controlled. There's another great move by Impact player into the second snake. Looks like they're moving into that other Dorito, too. Boom, nice move there. Now Edmonton's got the majority of the field covered. They've got both 50s. 
They're up two or three bodies, and they're really shooting those guns. Uh, another far side player being eliminated as Impact moves up the snake. Oh, oh, ow, ow, yeah, that hurts. If, you want, if you're sitting at home wondering what that feels like, that hurts. Take a handful of rocks and throw them at your head, and you'll know what it feels like. Edmondson just stomped Chicago Far Side. That was a great uh, game for Edmund in Impact, and not such a great game for Chicago Far Side. They just never got in the game. Lost two bodies early on. Impact just moved down the field. They took all the bunkers. Never stopped shooting their guns. Never stopped moving forward. It was a, it was kind of a textbook game if you're on the Impact side. Kind of a, a game you need to figure out if you're on the Far Side. When extreme paintball beyond the paint continues. We'll see what adrenaline junkie Josh Davey does for kicks when not playing paintball. Next on FSN. TV. Welcome back to Extreme Paintball Beyond the Paint on FSN. Paintball combines all the necessary ingredients to make it the ultimate adrenaline sport. So, what does a self-proclaimed adrenaline junkie do for thrills when not playing at the competitive level? Well, we hung out with Josh Davey and his team in their hometown of Edmonton, Alberta, to find out. Uh, we did go on a roller coaster ride yesterday. That was my first roller coaster ride ever. I'd been on a kiddie's roller coaster ride, you know, one of the ones that goes almost it's like a train. It's not even a roller coaster. And I freaked out there. I think I was 14 or 15, and I wasn't really a kid. I was on a kid's roller coaster, and I freaked out. That's my first roller coaster. Oh, man, I don't know about this. <coughs> I don't know, brother. Oh, God. Oh, man. I took the first drop, the first drop, which was the biggest drop. Oh, my God. And I closed my eyes for the entire ride after. Oh, my God. I do not want to be here. 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 This is not good. I promise I'll be careful the rest of my life. Oh. And I hated it. I've never, ever done anything like that at all. Oh. Get me out of here. Never, <laughs> ever. Doing that again. go and uh, top it with a bungee jump, which was even more terrifying. I really don't know about this. Anybody out there, if I don't come back, just keep living the dream. Have fun. See you at the bottom. Three, two, one, one, two. <laughs> oh. Whoa! Oh. Whoa! It's like nothing I've ever, ever done. I will never, ever, ever ever do this ever again ever oh. <laughs> for all those guys that go bungee jumping wow power to you you guys are insane insane that was crazy crazy 
Now, let's go back to the NPPL Center Court, where Josh Davies' Edmonton Impact is set for the breakout against Pittsburgh All-Americans. Good breakouts with both teams. Impact looked at those seven guys across the back line shooting their guns. They get a G against the uh, Pittsburgh All-Americans, so that was a big advantage. Here goes Pittsburgh moving uh, from the lipstick into the car wash. JT now has got some control down that line, so he's able to battle a little bit with his mirror. That's going to help out. That might help uh, Pittsburgh get in that snake. You can hear the G1 call. They, Edmonton just figured out that they finally shot somebody, but that's actually the second guy that they've shot. And you can really see Edmonton with the back left and the snake player shooting down their lane, really pushing JT in. See, and I can see JT looking inside. He's unable to look down the tape because there's just two players there shooting at him. And if he looks down the tape, he's going to get shot. There goes another Pittsburgh American walking off. Pittsburgh's getting low on bodies. They're down four on seven now, really giving Impact a big advantage. Impact's got all the positions with that move there to the Drito on the opposing side of the field. They've got the snake. They've got all the back bunkers. And they're just really shooting those guns. Pittsburgh's down to three bodies now. They got one in each corner, one in the right lipstick, and Edmonton is just totally controlling this game. Another big move from Edmonton into that center 50 spike. They're rolling their gun. What's really hard to do at this point when you're when you're so up on bodies, you've got seven guys on one team, you've got three on the other team. It takes a lot of discipline for Edmonton to not just run down the field and trade out with those bodies. The reason they don't want to do that is because obviously you lose points when you lose bodies. The hardest thing to do in this sport is to win seven alive. And Impact's got a legitimate shot at doing this. If they can stay disciplined, if they can eliminate the last couple players, they, there goes another one. Now, there's only two players left, one in the back right, one in the lipstick. If they can eliminate these two players without losing any bodies, they're going to get a perfect game, which is a 100-point game. That's, it's very rare that that happens. Good shot of the Edmonton player in that center 50 Drew to wrapping and putting pressure on that back right. What Edmonds is looking to do right now is just shoot the sides of all the bunkers that the players are in and apply that pressure. It looks like JT's the last one there. Trying to wave him off, telling him he's already been hit. There goes the Edmonton player through to grab the flag. That was a perfect game for Edmonton. They controlled the tempo of the whole game. They shot their guns, got a couple Gs early, never lost a body, and uh, played as close to perfect paintball as you can play. It's really impressive for such a young team. Up next, we'll take a look at what the Impact team is doing in an attempt to become the best pro team in the league when Extreme Paintball Beyond the Paint continues on FS. In 2005, Monster Balls were created, dominating the competition. Through modern science and technology, Monster Balls have evolved. A more accurate shell designed for deadly accuracy terrorizes in all weather conditions. Thicker and brighter for maximum markability. Monster Balls, the world's best-selling paintballs, just got better. FSN's coverage of Extreme Paintball Beyond the Paint is brought to you by X-Ball Paintballs, found at fine retailers everywhere. By Spider, passion for paintball. And by the United States Marine Corps, the few, the proud, the Marines. Today, we've seen Edmonton Impact put on two commanding performances, claiming victories over Chicago Farside and Pittsburgh All-Americans. We recently tagged along with Josh Davey and his team to their practice facility in Edmonton to find out what they're doing to make such a difference come game day. I'm kind of a field captain. Just keep all the guys organized out there and stuff like that. You know, all the guys on the team are great. They're all real professional and they're really set on what they want to achieve and stuff. And really all I came and did was showing them that Hey, you guys can do this. You guys are great paintball players. You're smart kids. You know what you can do. I'm the one that's drawn on the piece of paper what we're up to. I come up with a few basic ideas, right? We jot it on paper, and then each guy has his input, and, and we craft it from there. I'm just a player as anybody else. So, hey, do you want to come train with us tomorrow or what? What time you guys want to go to the gym tomorrow? We're thinking about going and working out tomorrow. Yeah, just the, just the usual. We'll do the ladders and the, the, some of the running. Ah. The biggest thing about running the team is running everything on the, the side. It's, you know, you're setting up practices, booking plane tickets, organizing the website, uh, 
um, media, what we have to do for the next event. You know, you're always trying to think ahead and trying to think about what it's going to take to get that next level. Now for our final game of the day, Edmonton Impact will see the same NPPL bunker scheme they've been practicing in their hometown as they set for yet another battle with Swedish model Alex Lundqvist and Jersey Authority. Here we go with Edmonton, he's been ready for the breakout. Blonsky's gonna go to the hook. Blonsky took it right in the chest out of the break. Did not get a chance to slide it out. That was way too quick. I think Alex may have shot him on the way out there accidentally. Jersey throws another body in the snake as we see an Edmonton player leaving from there into the snake. Alex is owning the line, shooting down the line. Edmonton drops another body. You see that uh, armband hit the ground there. They pull the armband off and the player is eliminated to signify that he is eliminated. You can see Edmonton is trying to power their guy into that Dorito by putting two guns on that corner. There's Alex shooting that one finger down the line, trying to talk as much as he can. That's a great close-up of uh, Alex Lundquist there. Shooting that gun down the line. All he's trying to do at this point is just own his line, keep his mirror, which is the bunker on the opposite side of the field of him, in, and keep their snake player from moving down the, the line. Looks like another player from Jersey's walking out of the corner there. Jersey's down two or three bodies. Edmonton's only lost to one player. Looks like it's about six on four. There's Alex, he's going back and forth, left and right. He's getting a lot of pressure there in that corner. You can see the guy in the Dorito across the field, the corner across the field, and his bunker, his mirrors, all trying to shoot him and pinch him out. There's Carthy in the back, using his barrel to uh, manipulate the bunker a little bit, get a better line. There's one impact player is going backwards, but another one's going forward. So the impact lasts another player, but they gain some uh, real estate, so it's a, it's a decent trade. Wow, look at that. Both guys are five feet away from each other. I don't think they both know that they're there. As soon as the impact player figures out the other player's there, he's going to probably get him. Yep, there he goes for the elimination. Yep, he comes the referee in to let him out. There's Carthy in the back, Alex on this side. And uh, another Jersey Authority player over there in the Dorito 1. Jersey Authority's in a, in a bad situation. I don't know if they're going to be able to run down the field and win this game like they did the last one. You can see the Edmonton player going back and forth. The Snake player just saying that he shot Alex. I was probably out walking out, leaving McCarthy all by himself in that back center, and in a bad way. There we go with a nice little bounce from impact player in the snake. Another player going up the center. McCarthy sees the guy in the center, puts some pressure on him. Player instead of just back. Looks like McCarthy shot an Edmonton player running up the left side, but was also shot out. There we go. And this game is over. Edmonton impact wins with five players, looks like, left alive. It was a great game for Edmund Impact. They uh, tried to snake, take the snake early, uh, lost that player, but they shot out the guy taking the snake for Jersey Authority. They took the Doritos first, and they had a snake presence the whole game. They, uh, they really were in control this whole game. Edmonton's playing a, a great event. They're in control the whole game. They're shooting their guns, communicating really, really well, and they're going to be really hard to stop here on Sunday. Coming up on the next installment of Extreme Paintball Beyond the Paint. L.A. infamous team captain Brian Fowle is living out a long-distance relationship with his teammates, both personally and professionally. It's all right here on FSN. Speed of over 200 miles per hour. Every competitor playing offense and defense at the same time. Here at the NPPL tournament level, paintball has evolved into a complex team sport have a lot of discipline and you also have a lot of teamwork. Everybody has to do their job to make the team be able to beat the other team. With an explosive blend of action and athleticism, driven by pure adrenaline. It's just a complete adrenaline rush all the way around. I think it's really intense and that's just an adrenaline rush in itself. Just the adrenaline rush, man, getting shot. You don't really feel it when you're playing, but it's just a rush, man. I'm, I'm too pretty to be up there in the front getting shot, you know, hide in the back, play cool, play calm. This season, we've shown just a handful of the leading personalities that fuel the attitude of the sport. Paintball's my life right now, so let the adventure continue. But don't get me wrong, I'm still gonna hurt you either way. That's the kind of person I'm gonna be, because that's what they want me to be. What makes it an extreme sport is just like the action that's going on, what's happening on the field, it's, it's constant action. When you know someone's gonna hurt you, it, the adrenaline flies. The speed and quickness required to play paintball make it a competition for the young. And with thousands of new participants playing each year, the future of the sport looks bright. But it is the sport of youth, and, and it's because it's such a new sport. It hasn't been around for 50 years. It's been around since the late 80s. So we're still developing what it's going to look like. We don't know. I think that's why the next generation is going to define um, what this paintball sport looks like. 
Last time, we led off with two powerhouse teams from Southern California, LA Infamous and San Diego Dynasty. Dynasty lost one of their key players, Todd Martinez, on the breakout, but they remained aggressive and secured the key positions in the snake early. This would keep Infamous from advancing down the Dorito side of the field. Infamous was forced to make some risky moves for position, but Dynasty's advantage was too much. The victory